Welcome back to Team Blush. Today we are going to be installing the full Kenwood audio system into the 240SX. I've been piecing this together with secondhand components over the last three months or so. I wanted to make this video just to show that you don't have to have a lot of money to actually put a pretty decent audio system into a car. Now I will put all of these components down in the description of the video except for this box. This box is discontinued unfortunately and I was hard pressed to find it so you will have to source another box if you do want to do this exact same setup. That being said, all of this brand new I believe would cost over a grand to have installed. So it really pays to find deals and do the work yourself. It's really not that hard of a job. I'm not going to go into all of the specifics in this video on how to install an audio system, but there are tons of YouTube videos out there that show very detailed procedures on how to do this yourself. And with that being said, let's get this audio system installed. I'm pretty excited. I've been without music for about three months, so let's go. The first thing that I will be doing is putting in the door speakers. Those are the easiest ones to really do so I'm going to start with the easiest and work my way to the hardest. The door panel is attached by three points. There is a screw down here in this pocket hidden underneath a little plastic piece. So use a trim removal tool to pop that up and undo that screw. There is a, another screw right here in the handle. This one can be pretty tricky. The first time that I actually undid this screw, I had to use an impact driver to keep from stripping that. So be wary of that if you have never taken that off before. And the last one is right here behind this little plastic nub. Again, just use a trim removal tool and pop that out and undo it with your screwdriver. Once you have undone those three screws, you can go ahead and pull out the door handle with a trim removal tool as well as the little pocket that had the screw in it. And as you can see, there's a little plug right here. So undo that plug and pull this piece out. And once you have all that done, you can go ahead and pull the rest of the door panel off of the door itself. Be careful when you're doing this and preferably use a trim removal tool. The clips that hold this door panel on are pretty fragile and you are probably gonna break some, hopefully not, but that's the way it goes. Got all of those little clips popped off. They run along this left side on the bottom and up to the right side there. Once all of those have been popped off, you can go ahead and shimmy the door panel upward until it pops off just like that. And now that we have the door panel off of the car, you can come down to the lower left hand of the door where our speaker would be normally. I've been in here prior and pulled the old speakers that were no longer working in preparation for this video. So there are four screws that would have held that speaker in that you will have to remove if you're doing this yourself. And two wires that you can just cut, again, in preparation for our new speaker. Once you've removed the old speaker and cut the speaker wires going to it, Go ahead and strip those wires to get them ready for our new speaker. Just like that. 
So for the door speakers, I ended up getting these Kenwood KFC 4675Cs. They are a six by four speaker. <laughs> they are definitely secondhand, as you can see from the cuts on the speaker body itself. It came with wires already pre-attached. So all I'm gonna do is cut about right in the middle and then crimp it together with the speaker wiring in our door. All right, well, I ended up cutting and stripping both the wires that I was going to splice together, but ends up, I believe, that the factory amp inside of the door is actually faulty. So what I'm gonna do is pull this plastic speaker housing out and bypass that amp. Okay, so where I'm at currently is I've pulled away the plastic speaker housing from the door itself. Be super freaking careful with this thing. It is falling apart. There are cracks everywhere. What I'm trying to do is pull this wire off of the backside so that I can pull this plug right here so that I can go about figuring out which one of these wires is our actual speaker wire. Okay, so that took a little bit of time, but ended up using these pliers to pull this little plastic piece that held the wire to the back of the amp body in. And now I just need to wiggle this plug out. There we go. That is not a trivial process. Just be patient with it and it should come out. And now that we have this piece out of the car, you can go ahead and flip it around and pull out all of these Phillip head screws. But first, before doing that, I'm actually gonna test and see if any of these wires itself actually work because it wouldn't make sense to delete the amp in the speaker housing if these wires actually don't work. If these wires don't work, then I will just have to run my own speaker wire from scratch, which I don't want to do, but that's what happens when you have an old car. So let's go ahead and test these out, see if it works. A little update here. I ended up pulling that plug off of the amp inside of the speaker housing. Can't seem to figure out which one of those five or six wires is actually feeding audio signal to the speakers. So instead of using this old haggard wiring harness, I'm just gonna end up using my own wire. I found this Amazon Basics wire. It's actually a lot higher quality than the old OEM wiring from Nissan. So I am going to go ahead and reinstall this plastic. Another reason that I don't want to pull out that amplifier is because this is really just starting to fall apart. As you can see, these cracks and stuff, it's being held together by that amplifier body. So for the time being, I am just going to leave it alone. So I'm gonna reinstall this speaker housing into the door panel and then pull my Kenwood receiver out of the plastic bezel so that I can get access to the backside and run my new speaker wire through the dash on both sides of the car to get the radio out of the center console all we need to do is take a plastic pry tool and come around the edges of the plastic and pull up be careful when doing this because this plastic again is old and honestly everything on this car is old so 
just be careful with pretty much everything you do. And just set that aside for now. Now there should be two screws, one right here and one on the other side right here. Undo those so that we can pull the head unit out of the pocket. Removing the head unit gives me access to run my spool of wire through the dash and through the door over here. <clears throat> you can see that wire right there comes down through the door and ends up right here. So I will need to run my wires. Continuing on wiring this new speaker wire through the dash, pull down the glove box. It has these little tabs right here and there's another one on the other side. You can actually just bend the plastic back just enough. Just be careful when you're doing it. You bend this plastic back and you can pull the glove box down and that will give you access. It is definitely hard to see up in there, but you can see where the wiring comes through the little grommet in the side of the door right there. And what I'm gonna do is cut up this coat hanger wire, attach it to the speaker wire, and then pull it through that grommet and pull it through on this side. So let's see how that goes. I think it's definitely gonna be a pain. Well, I was correct in saying that that would be a huge pain to do. But as you can see, I have run a speaker wire through the center console behind the glove box through the door here and have pulled it out through the plastic speaker mount in the door. Uh, now we can go ahead and come to the wire that we ran in the center console. And what I'm going to do is wire it up to my Kenwood head unit. And prior to this installation, I found that for the front right speaker, I will be using the gray and gray and black wire. So I will just snip them on this end and then crimp them to that wire right there so that we can install the speaker. And just like that, we have got our gray and black and gray cables connected to the wire that I ran through the door and I tested it with the secondhand Kenwood speaker and it is indeed working so to solidify the deal I am going to crimp these wires together and install it back into the door with a little bit of headache we've gotten our speaker installed into the door panel ended up having to actually take off that amp that I've been going on about throughout the video. Uh, the back side of the speaker was actually coming into contact with it, so very carefully I took that off, and of course while doing that, the uh, entire speaker mount plastic was just crumbling and falling apart, so definitely need to get one of those in the future, but it seems to be holding together just enough at the moment that it will work. So all I need to do now is get the door panel installed again. Once done with that, I'm going to move over to the driver's side front speaker. And I will probably do that off video just because you have watched me already take off the door panel and install the speaker on the right hand side. It is the exact same way on the left hand side. And once done with that, we will move to the rear deck speakers which I will bring you to in just a moment. 
both door panels have been reinstalled after installing the speakers and they are working perfectly fine. I am going to be keeping my head unit pulled out of the dash later for when I am installing the subwoofer. So now I am going to come back to the back seat of the vehicle. I am going to lower the seats in the back by pulling these two tabs up on top. So like I said, pull both those tabs. This will lower down now that the back seats have been lowered down to give me access to the trunk area where I have already preemptively opened the trunk. I'm going to undo the third brake light assembly by undoing these two tabs. It's just a Phillips head screwdriver and once you pull those out this entire assembly will come up. There will be a plug underneath that you will have to undo and then you will be able to set it aside. Once the third brake light assembly has been pulled and you have pulled this little plug, undo the two bolts holding this bracket on. With that bracket removed, we can finally go ahead and pull off the carpeted rear deck. And to do that, come underneath and inside of the trunk of the car. It is a bit of a tight fit, but you definitely can get access to things under here and as you can see these little tabs kind of a vanilla color I guess they run all down the length of the trunk on the underside of this metal rear deck pop each of these little tabs through the metal deck and once you've pushed those tabs through you will be able to lift this carpeted rear deck and bend it just a little bit in the middle so that you can rotate it and get it out of the car. And just as easy as that, we have access to our two holes for the rear deck speakers. And as you can see, I've already pulled mine. Once again, I've already been in this vehicle prior when I was testing to see what worked and what didn't work. I ran some temporary rear speakers, so I have already gone and wired them. You can see just a little bit the wiring for each one that I've done previously. So for the rear speakers, I'm gonna be running these Kenwood KFC 1665Rs. They are a 6.5 inch speaker and they sound pretty good. They are definitely an upgrade from the cracked and worn out speakers that were previously in the rear deck of this vehicle. So let's go ahead and get these installed. To get these installed, it's pretty easy. You can see the four bolts around each rim of where the speakers go. Just pull those up, drop the speaker in, and go ahead and bolt them down. All right, sorry about that jump in the footage, but I have gotten the speaker installed, but it was not without some pretty major modification. So I had to actually go in on each of the tabs where it would bolt in and cut them so that these instead of being a tab are instead a slot. That allowed me just enough room to bolt in all four bolts but that is something to take in consideration if you are going to pick up these speakers which I do not recommend. Do not buy these speakers if you are putting them into the rear deck of a 240SX. That is unneeded modification when you can find other speakers that will for sure work without modification. So I'm going to go ahead and modify this other speaker to put in this rightmost speaker slot 
and then I will wire them up. Both rear speakers have been installed with that modification that I was talking about. So now I'm going to come underneath the speakers and as you can see I have already crimped and put the connector on this power wire and now I just need to put a connector on this ground so that we can go ahead and plug in our speaker to test it. Well, it is not the prettiest wiring in the world, but as you can see, the speakers on the passenger and driver's side of the vehicle on the rear deck have been wired up and are working perfectly fine. So the last thing that we are going to be wiring up is our subwoofer and the amp so let's go ahead and open up the hood to start running our power cable through the entirety of the car oh and i almost forgot because i was so excited to get the subwoofer and amp into the car that i will be putting the rear deck carpeting and the third brake light assembly back into the car so next time you see the trunk area back here that will be all done and looking good and welcome to day two of this audio system install i didn't think it was going to take nearly this long but i am trying to do things correctly so to wire the subwoofer power wire from the battery to the trunk of the car i am going to wire it through the passenger side wheel well it is pretty hard to see but back in the passenger side wheel well there is actually a hole that goes down to the fender and as you can see i have been working on getting this fender pulled out just enough so that i have access to that hole right there in the fender well i'm going to snake the power wire down from there through the fender again very hard angles to get on camera but i'm going to fish it to the door hinge and on the door hinge side i'm going to use that same grommet that i used for the speaker wire to bring that power cable into the car run it along the floorboard and into the trunk of the 240. Update, I have run the power cable for the subwoofer through the engine bay. It looks decently clean. I have ran it through the passenger side wheel well, as you can see right there. Come underneath the wheel well, see it going up and into the door hinge it was very much a pain but it is right there and goes underneath the dashboard so now i am going to be running it back behind the carpet on the edge here until i get to the back seats and once i get to the back seats i'll show you how to remove the actual lower portion of the back seat so that we can finish running that power wire. Working on removing the trim so that I can run the power cable underneath the carpet. As you can see, I have a pile of the floor mat, the side sill trim, and the cover right here that fits over the ECU. It's really easy, it's just a few bolts, a few Phillips head clips, and then you can pull that all away so that you can peel back the floor. You can see this little brace right here. There's actually empty space underneath it where I can run the cable. And once I get back to the back seat area, I still need to figure out how far back I want to pull the trim or I want to trim away some of the carpet so we will have to see and update in just a moment 
also might be a good idea to clean this while you're in this area just because OCD tendencies. The subwoofer power wire is run through the carpet up to this point. So what I need to do now is pull these rear seats and it is really easy. All you have to do is come to the bottom of both the passenger side and the driver side, find this little black tab. All you do is pull that out and then lift the seat and it will come right up. There we go. And do the same on the driver's side. Now I have never had these rear seats out and I really don't know if the previous owner has ever had them out either. So let's go on an adventure and see if any treasures come up as we take these rear seats out. The rear seats have been removed and unfortunately, nothing all that cool was hidden under the seats, but there was this Sears Grand Opening 10% off coupon, and this is actually dated to 1993, I believe. Yep, right there, 1993, so that's kind of cool. It is pretty nasty in the back seat once I remove those cushions. So I'm gonna come back here with a vacuum, clean that all up just while I'm here, and then I can go about removing this side panel, at least the very bottom of it. You can see where the carpet ends. I'm just going to snake the power wire up into there and then into the back of the trunk. The subwoofer wire has been run through that plastic panel underneath the seatbelt bracket and is going up and into the trunk and be careful when you're doing this yourself because that's as much wire as i have left luckily i am running a down firing subwoofer box so i think it will be just enough but that was i believe 25 feet of wire and i was being a little ocd about things i have run the wire into some strange places and have tucked it really well so that you will really not be able to see it once I'm finished with this process but something to be wary of maybe get 30 feet if you are doing a 240SX. Next up I will be removing the center console because I am going to run the RCA cables from the head unit to the trunk for the subwoofer through the carpet in the middle of the vehicle, underneath those rear seats and into the trunk. So I have gotten the RCA cable plugged in. You can see it right here. And I have cleanly tucked it underneath the carpet of the center console area. And it comes out into this mess right now. I'm gonna clean this up and run it into the trunk. But before that, I am going to put the center console trim back on and get that all cleaned up. We have gotten the center console put back into the car. And as you can see, we've cleaned up the RCA wire quite a bit and have run it into the back of the trunk here. Now. All that we need to do is come into the engine bay, crimp the connector onto our subwoofer wire cable, run our ground in the trunk, which we will get to in just a moment, and then we should be able to test the system. It has been about an hour or so, and I ended up getting the power wire for the subwoofer all crimped and set up on the battery terminal ran split loom over the wire throughout the entirety of the engine bay so that it looks nice and tidy put the inner fender well liner back onto the car I still need to put the trim back on for the inner sill liner and for the ECU. And then once done with that, we can finally come back to the trunk to 
wire up our ground cable onto some part of the trunk we'll figure that out when we get to it and then plug in our amplifier so now i have gotten the power and ground cables crimped with their connectors for the amplifier next i need to pull back this plastic panel on the inside of the trunk so that i can find a suitable bolt to ground the amplifier out to well unfortunately it doesn't seem like there is anywhere to really ground out to the body of the car for this ground wire on the amplifier so i'm going to take a wire brush to one of the studs on the strut tower and with that wire wheeled back there should be enough to properly ground out the amplifier and i think that spot will not likely rust out anytime soon but i will have to keep an eye on that in the future i do not have a small enough wire wheel that i believe that i would be able to cleanly and without messing up a lot of the top of this strut tower be able to make this a clean surface for the amps ground wire so instead i'm going to use some good old sandpaper just put a little bit of work into it and be careful just want to get enough of that bare metal showing that i am confident in knowing that the amplifier is properly grounded out It actually turned out better than I thought it was going to. You can see that I just sanded back that stud and connected the ground wire to it. Snaked it around and it looks like I will have the perfect amount for when I put the plastic panel back onto the trunk and push this carpet back flat. Another update. We have power, ground, and I've run the speaker wire to the actual subwoofer itself and our RCA cable is connected. I completely forgot, it has been a long time since I have actually installed a subwoofer in a car, I forgot to run the wire that actually turns the amplifier on when you turn the car on. So I am gonna have fun because I have to take this blue wire that I hooked up to the head unit to test and see if it was working. Yes, it works. Going to have to crimp it, pull apart the center console once again, and pull the rear seats so that I can run that wire nice and clean. I'm gonna do that later. Right now I'm gonna go get something to eat because I've been at this for quite a while and it is starting to get on my nerves, so. I will get back with that in just a little while. After getting a little snack and doing a little bit of procrastination because that remote wire just ended up getting on my nerves so bad, I got the remote wire, ran through the center console, put the center console back on, put the rear seats back in, and put the seats back up. As you can see, we have it all wired up, sitting pretty nice. I still need to actually screw the amplifier down onto the box, but everything is working properly now. And I will give you a little listen here in just a little while. I am currently charging the battery because the entirety of the time that I was working on the car, I was being dumb and didn't pull the ground cable for the battery so it has been slowly dying throughout the day and a half or so that I have been working on the car. So here in just a moment I will give the video a chance to hear the audio. I don't know how well it will come across on the video but still worth a try after all of this work.
Okay, so everything has been installed, and I've been playing around with the head unit just a little bit. I haven't quite dialed in all the settings, but I've gotten it done well enough that I think you guys will be able to hear how actually decent of an audio system this is for just how cheap I paid for it. The subwoofer is a little funky. Like I said, I had those spacers because of the depth of the subwoofer that I got does not match that box and it does vibrate against the trunk just a little bit but other than that everything seems to be working really well and the audio quality is nice in the future I will have to get a shallow mount subwoofer to get rid of that vibrating in the trunk and I probably will get some sound deadening material in the future because this car is old and it rattles and vibrates quite a bit whenever you turn the audio up. So without further ado, here's a little test. I don't know how well the camera will be able to pick up the audio. So, as you can hopefully tell in the video, it does have a pretty clean sound to it. I'm delightfully surprised by that. And with that, I believe we've come to the end of the video. I apologize for the latter half of this video. It was pretty hard to get some of the angles when running the wires from the front of the car to the back of the car. And some other strange angles were just really hard to deal with so i definitely need to invest in a tripod which i hope i can get in the future so i can get some even higher quality content for the channel as a little treat for myself for doing the transmission swap you may have seen in a prior video and this audio system install which was actually a treat in and of itself i've put on this never content sticker which i absolutely love I'm trying to withhold myself when it comes to stickers on this vehicle and I'm probably going to do a system where for every big update or big project that I do on this vehicle I'll add another sticker just so that it doesn't become overwhelming. And with that being said if you reached to the end of the video thanks a bunch for watching it always helps with the analytics whenever people watch to the very end i hope to have some more updates coming in the future and it seems like i might be actually taking the engine out of the car in the near future due to some noises which i assume is the bearing the crank bearing in the motor so that might be getting pulled and we may be doing some interesting stuff to the engine whenever we are pulling that. You can keep up with us on Instagram over at team.blush. I will put it on the screen right now so that you guys know exactly where to go if you want to follow us. Follow us there, show us your builds, DM us. Uh, we love to see what the community is doing at the moment we're really just trying to make this thing as bulletproof as possible getting rid of any noises getting rid of any leaks and anything like that and then in the future 
we can start building on it, maybe do a KA24E turbo build. I know a lot of people aren't doing that, so that might be cool to do in the future. There's no telling what lay in store for this vehicle in the future, but if you're sticking around for it, thanks, and we will see you in the next video.